Sinyarasimos of Jordan was born during the 5th century in Lycia, Cappadocia, to God-pleasing parents. From a young age, Yerasimos had a great love for God, which led to him entering the monastic life early on. After he was tonsured a monk, he withdrew into the wilderness of Tabed to pray and to work ascetical labors, so that he could cleanse his soul from the demonic passions which separate a man from God. And after he lived in the wilderness of Tabed, for an unknown number of years, he returned to his homeland of Lycia for a short period of time before leaving for Palestine around the year 450 AD. Once he arrived in Palestine, Gerasimus went to live in the wilderness of Jordan where he founded a monastery. In the year 451 AD, the Fourth Ecumenical Council was held in Chalcedon under the Emperor Marcion. The council was convened to condemn the heresy of Ephthicus, an Archimandrite, and Dioscoros, a deacon. The two taught that Christ only possesses one nature and not two. The Holy Fathers of the Fourth Ecumenical Council rejected this teaching as being a demonic heresy which leads man to perdition, and so they emphasized that Christ exists in two natures, fully human and fully divine and that the two natures exist united together without confusion, without change, without division, without separation. While the church took a firm stance against this evil heresy, some priests and monks began to bash the ecumenical council, stating that it was erroneous. One of these monks was Theodosius, who in reality was a sorcerer and worked with demonic powers. Theodosius, having come to Palestine, began to create great disturbances among the faithful through his heretical teachings, and so many people were caught in his demonic snare. Theodosius's false teachings resulted in the removal of the Patriarch of Jerusalem, St. Juvenal, from his seat as primate, and so the wicked Theodosius took his place. Erasimus happened to be one of the monks who were tricked by Theodosius's heretical teachings. However, God desired to correct Erasimus from his sinful ways, which lead a person to perdition. St. Cyril of Jerusalem gives an account of Erasimus's spiritual saving, saying, There was then, in the wilderness of Jordan, a hermit who not too long ago came from Lycia, by the name of Erasimus who had passed all the ordinances of the monastic life and who fought well against the evil spirits. He, having conquered and driven out the unseen demons, was tripped up and deceived by the demons which are seen, meaning the heretics, for he fell into the heresy of Ephthicus. And having heard of the pious Ephthemius, whose good works had reached the ears of all people, he went to him as he was then in the wilderness which is called Ruva. And meeting him, he benefited greatly, and he stayed together with him for a long time. Having fully learned the teachings of the true faith, he renounced the heretical disease, and he returned to the right faith, repenting greatly for being deceived. Soon after this occurred, the evil Theodosius was removed by the Emperor Marcion, and Patriarch Juvenal was reinstated. Erasimus at one point had over seventy disciples who lived in the wilderness surrounding the monastery. He had all of his disciples follow in his footsteps through great ascetical works. Erasimus would have them live on their own in small huts for five days a week. Here they were given some dried bread, some water, and a few figs to eat, but they were not allowed to eat anything that had been cooked. He also did not permit them to have any fire in their huts to keep warm, and so they were forced to keep themselves warm instead throughout their fervent prayer. On Saturdays and Sundays, all of the monks would gather at the monastery where they would partake in the divine liturgy and the holy mysteries. 
only on these days were the monks allowed to eat some cooked food and to drink some wine. During the Lenten fast, Yerasimus would abstain from eating any food all the way up to the celebration of Easter. All he would consume during this time were the body and blood of Jesus Christ. One time, St. Yerasimus was walking through the wilderness when all of a sudden he heard a great roar. And looking around, Yerasimus found a lion that had an injured paw due to a large thorn having pierced it. And the lion looked up at Yerasimus with gentle eyes as if he were asking to heal him. And so Yerasimus sat down next to the lion and he removed the large thorn from his paw. And having cleaned out the wound, he placed a patch over it and he released the lion. But the lion, having been healed by Yerasimus, did not leave his side. And so, to Yerasimus's amazement, the lion followed him wherever he went, and Yerasimus took care of the lion and would feed him bread and lentils. At Yerasimus's monastery there was a donkey, which the fathers would use to bring water from the Jordan River to the monastery, and Yerasimus decided that it was better to send the lion together with the donkey than to make a monk go instead. And so the lion would go together with the donkey every day to the Jordan River to bring water to the monastery. One day, the lion fell asleep, and a merchant who was passing by saw the donkey alone and decided to take him, thinking that he had no owner. And the lion, having awakened, saw the donkey was missing and so returned to the monastery. Irasimus, seeing that the lion returned without the donkey, assumed that the lion had ate him. And as punishment, Irasimus decided that the lion from now on must go to the Jordan River alone and bring water to the monastery on his back. After a while, when the lion was at the Jordan getting water, he saw the merchant who had taken the donkey passing by. He recognized the donkey which he had lost, and so he began to roar ferociously towards the merchant and his men. And fearing for their lives, the men ran away, leaving behind the donkey and three camels which were carrying a great deal of grain. And the lion brought the donkey back to the monastery along with the camels and took him to Yerasimus. And Yerasimus smiled and said to the other monks, In vain I rebuked the lion, believing that he had eaten the donkey. And so Yerasimus named the lion Jordan. And the lion continued to come to the monastery to receive food from Yerasimus for five years until Yerasimus fell asleep in the Lord. One day the lion came to the monastery to find Yerasimus but he was nowhere to be found. And Savatios, who was the disciple of Yerasimus, saw the lion and told him that Yerasimus had fallen asleep in the Lord. And the lion began to roar in agony and grief as he continued to look for Yerasimus. And the more the monks tried to console him, the louder his roaring would grow. Finally, the monks took the lion to the place where Yerasimus was buried, and the lion began to hit his head against the ground, and his roaring became louder than ever, until he too died on top of Yerasimus's grave. This did not occur because the lion possessed a soul, as we humans do, but rather he was a means for God to glorify Yerasimus, as his Kanthakion reads, O Father, you burn with heavenly love, preferring the harshness of the Jordan desert to all the delights of the world. Therefore a wild beast submitted to you even unto your death. He died in obedience and grief on your grave. Thus our God glorified you. Now as you stand before him, O Father Yerasimus, ever be mindful of us. Saint Yerasimus is depicted in Orthodox iconography alongside the lion, Jordan, as a testament to the truth of these events and to the saint's holiness. St. Yerasimus fell asleep in the Lord in the year 475 A.D. and is celebrated by the Orthodox Church on the 4th of March every year.